Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today, or I should say tonight, uh, it's Friday night, uh, I've got a beer, as you can see, I've not got much of it left, but I've got a beer, uh, this is kind of pre-drinks because we are drinking at 8, um, and um, for something else, yeah, I was, uh, I'm getting dressed up as well, so that'd be cool, I've got a nice uh, new set of trousers, probably not the most fashionable, they're kind of yellow ones and I've got a nice shirt uh nice next one that I got well not for Christmas but I got it with my Christmas money and then I've got a nice little uh, coat as well so I'm gonna get nice and dressed up not that we're actually going anywhere because we can't go anywhere but we're just gonna be in the flat uh same I don't really need my coat do I unless we go out for a cigarette but still I'll probably wear it anyway because it complements to the whole look um so yeah, today I thought we would talk a little bit about Taoism. Now, of course, it's Friday night, I've got my beer, it's not going to be anything crazy or anything in depth. I know I've talked about Taoism on uh, other channels before as well, so I know most of you will kind of be familiar with it from what I've said in the past. Um, but it's an interesting one, Taoism. Uh, so I don't really want to say that it was started in 2500 BC or anything like that, because that wouldn't necessarily be right. Um, now, Lao Tzu, the founding father of Taoism, or who's considered the founding father of Taoism, you could kind of draw some sort of parallel with Jesus in Christianity and with Lao Tzu, and you could say that they're kind of similar figures. Probably a better comparison might be the Buddha, although saying that some people would say that the Buddha in terms of, let's say, if you're ranking people, he would outrank Lao Tzu. Um, maybe the Buddha would be just about on par with Jesus. So maybe, okay, yeah, let's say that Lao Tzu was a little bit below Jesus. Let's say, like, Jesus is here, number one. Then you've got, like, the Buddha, who's, like, hot on his tails, like, contending. Then you've got Lao Tzu, like, number three. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, but you could make the comparison. Um, so... Uh, about 2500 BC. Now, there's two books that are very interesting from uh, Lao Tzu, and they are the Hue Ching and the uh, Tao Te Ching. And basically, the Tao Te Ching means uh, the Book of the Way or the Lao Tzu book. Um, and it's kind of the Bible of Taoism. Again, you could kind of make that, that link there. Um, and it's got the Taoist teachings in, and very, very interesting. Um, but the unknown teachings of Lao Tzu, the Hu Wei Ching, uh, that's a very interesting book. There's some lovely passages in there. And there's one passage in particular that doesn't get talked about much. And it says, and I'm paraphrasing here, of course, um, the information in these scroll scrolls will take many forms in the generations to come. Oh God, that's that's the beer indigestion burping coming up. Um, but it'll take many many forms in the generations to come, and um, it's very interesting because I've I've observed this like obviously with the internet and stuff now. Uh, the information of Taoism that was of course in those scrolls originally um, is now being spread via different forms, via the internet, via this, via that. Now there's another passage, and I think it's again in the, the unknown teachings of Lao Tzu, um, that says the world is full of half-enlightened half masters. And it might, there might be a little bit after that. It says, be careful of them or something. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just tagging that on. I don't know. But it definitely says, uh, the world is full of half enlightened masters. And it's very interesting. Um, oh, I know what he says. No, I'll remember now. Um, he basically says how, uh, these master, masters always speak out too early about, let's say, their spiritual progression. And, um, Therefore, they they they've not got the precise awareness that you need to be able to speak out. In fact, actually, what's happening is they're being captivated by delusions of grandeur, by spiritual inflation, ego inflation, whatever you want to call it, really. Um, and that's a very very interesting passage. And of course, there's a lot of people like that who recite the teachings, who make those follies. We all make these follies with regards to when we're going down some sort of spiritual path, whether it be Taoism, 
whether it be sort of Christian mysticism or what, whatever, mysticism in general, uh, any of the Hindu path to moksha, which moksha is just another word for enlightenment, whether it's in the Zen tradition of trying to attain satori, um, whatever, whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter. We all, we all make these follies because it's the road to experience. And if you didn't make that folly, um, then you would, you would never, be able to gain any sort of level of true wisdom or true insight because it's the folly in itself that leads to um wisdom what's the saying by william blake that alan watts always bloody quotes as well uh the man who persists in his folly will become wise there we go um and really it's kind of it's not only that but it's almost a, and i heard uh, i read somewhere i think it was carl jung who said something similar to it um that it's actually as if folly and wisdom are the same thing. They arise mutually, in the, or almost mutually, in the sense of as soon as you make a mistake, you realise in that moment the wisdom of that mistake. If, let's say, um, I burn a piece of toast, then immediately in my folly, I under- I've got wisdom, because I understand that, oh, hang on a minute, I've put my toast in for too long. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got the dial a little bit too high. So immediately that folly turns and flips into um, wisdom. Or maybe not wisdom, but into knowledge, we could say. Um, now, Taoism, in a sense, it's all about flowing. It's about flowing with the Tao, with what's known as the Tao. Now, the Tao, you can take it as just a fancy name for the universe. You can take it also as uh, the universe and then what's beyond the universe. That's, you you know, that's probably a better conception, actually. You can take it as well as the way of nature. And also the Tao can translate as well to English as the way. Um, So it's it's the way of things. It's the way of um, nature, the way of the universe, let's say. And... um, it's a very, very interesting concept. Now, of course, the Taoist, uh, the, the Taoist, uh, uh, center around the conception of the, the yin and yang, or the yin yang, um, and that was brought about a little bit earlier, actually, in the school of nat- naturalists in the uh, Warring States period. So it was brought about a little bit earlier, but then the Taoists obviously centered their kind of um philosophy and religion because Taoism can be both a religion or a philosophy whichever way you're looking at it but after i think i think it may be about the third fourth century bc we're talking over in china where the um yin yang sort of came about in the school of naturalists um and then the Taoists kind of centered their philosophy around it and then in about the fifth or sixth century in china within chan uh, Chan Buddhism, which later became Zen Buddhism in the 12th century, uh, when it was over in Japan. Um, but then in the 5th century, Zen Buddhism, which was kind of, uh, sorry, Chan Buddhism, which was kind of affiliated with Mahayana Buddhism, uh, and kind of branched out of that in a way, um, that ad- adopted some of the practices of Taoism. Zen, in a sense, is the perfect synthesization of Chinese thought. Um, the, the Basically, the philosophy of Zen synthesized and brought together all of these different forms of chi- Chinese philosophy and gave it a pinnacle, and it's it, absolutely remarkable. It kind of brings together even elements of con- Confucianism. Um, it brings together... Um, certainly elements of Taoism, uh, obviously Buddhism as well, and and it it just has formulated this pinnacle of of Chinese thought, and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, And that was, of course, in in China, and really, obviously, later in Zen, but then we're getting into Japanese. I mean, it's kind of Japanese, but Chinese, because it originated in China, but then went over to Japan. And, of course, it got changed by Japanese culture, as any of these things do. Um... But yeah, Zen is kind of like the, causally speaking and philosophically speaking, it was the the thing, it was the synthesized 
version of all these philosophies that, that just it, it just brilliant it really was was great and it was so it was so good that it happened you know in that in that way essentially so the Taoists naturally the yin yang the yin and yang um obviously you can't have yin without yang or you're flowing with with these two principles so the Taoists also have times of the day that they associate with yin and times of the day they associate with yang. And so there's times in the day, specifically, where the yin comes into the yang and the yang comes into the yin and things like that. Um, they obviously um, believe in the balance of the yin and yang and believe uh, that these two principles should have uh, a a balancing factor and, and they also believe that that happens naturally that uh, that isn't something that necessarily needs to be brought about although of course um what you know you could look at it from uh, a modern angle a modern kind of individualistic cultural an angle you know the individualistic culture that we live in um would look at it and say well let's say this room is incredibly incredibly messy um, then you would say, well, no one's going to clean it up. You're going to have to clean it up yourself. And what? Uh, and you would say, well, that's the yin energy in this room would be very, very high. There would be very, very little yang energy. The light principle, it would be the dark principle because the dark principle also would associate with the mess, with the, the, the messiness and the disgust of the room at the, the current setting. Um, but of course... A Taoist would go about it to, in a different way and realize that the Yang would ultimately always come in at some point anyway and that it would end up getting clean. I mean, you, you could argue, let's say, if I left this room a mess for month after month after month after month, then ultimately, even if I just walked out of here, it would end up cleaning itself up somehow. Some other person would end up doing it. I'd get slapped with a bloody fine uh, or whatever it would be. And this room would end up getting cleaned up. And now, of course, this comes into like the philosophy in the 6th century BC over in Greece with Heraclitus. Uh, with the idea that everything's in flux. Everything's changing. And what was once a house... Were, may now be a river or what, what was once a river may be now be may now be a house and though that's again the changing of energies and it's simply the, the same here the shape is this changing of energy um now how do we actually flow with the Tao? how do we actually because this is the main thing really how do we leaving the yin and yang to the side how do we flow with the Tao? um now, I'm not going to try and define the Tao because it's it's pointless doing that. What what the hell am I going to say? Well, the Tao is the way of the universe. Well, what's the way of the universe? How, the, Lao Tzu specifically said, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. You, you can't name it. You can't... Well, I can't even name it. There we go. But I'm just using the word Tao. Um, but I can't explain it. It, it just... It, it has to be gained out of experience. And you get this... Shall we say this metaphysical intuition about the way of the universe? I can't say what it is because I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. All I know is that I have this metaphysical intuition of how to somewhat get into certain experiences. And that, of course, comes over awareness and over um, understanding and over meditating. And, and I don't just mean meditating in a traditional uh standpoint of let's say meditating i get on the floor and across my legs and all the rest of it but actually meditating in terms of contemplation in terms of actually life of observing life and meditating within it within the experience of life within having the experience of life um but of course there are certain things that you can do to be able to start to kick start being able to flow with the Tao, right so there's a concept called Wu Wei, which is kind of translates as non-action, but it's not a very good. Everybody or everyone I've listened to on Wu Wei has all agreed that is not a very good translation, or not. Well, it's not. It's not very good. It kind of, yeah, it's not a very good translation in the sense that it kind of distorts its meaning, its true meaning of what it really means. Um, 
but yeah non-action it doesn't really do it justice so of course some people have called it non-forcing other people have called it effortless action i quite like effortless action so from a psychological viewpoint i would say what what this is um imagine you've got your ego around here and this isn't a neuropsychological viewpoint you could go into a neuropsychological viewpoint on it as well and certain reactions happening in the brain would uh, be able to be ob observed when you are actually in the state of wu wei it's actually been observed anyway anyway in experiments um, but i'm not going to give a neuropsychological viewpoint because i'm not really that clued up on neuropsychology i'm actually doing that this term so that'll be quite interesting to learn more about that i only have a very basic knowledge of a few little areas of the brain at this point but imagine you've got your ego here and this is like your ego awareness i'm it i'm in my ego now i'm aware of everything right and imagine you get yourself into some sort of state of dormancy let's say and what i mean by that is you're doing something, you're doing the washing, or you're doing, or you're doing some ironing, or you're doing something on your computer, and you're just really, really getting into the flow, and you lose your, your ego almost becomes unconscious to you, and what I mean by that is unconsciousness seeps into your ego, and it almost feels as if you're on autopilot. Now, that isn't particularly Wu Wei, but it gets us close to understanding what it is. It, it, I mean, because also within that idea, you can so, still sometimes have some sort of conception of yourself or some sort of uh, inability to flow with what's happening and stuff like that. But it gets us close to what this effortless action is or what this Wu Wei is. It's unconsciousness in consciousness from a psychological viewpoint. And so... Uh, imagine if you're playing tennis, this is a better example for actually getting exactly what Wu Wei is specifically. You're playing tennis and uh, the ball's coming back and forth. And you've been playing for a little while and you suddenly are, are getting into it. Your your body's starting to heat up, you know, it's starting to, you, you're getting moving, your mind's becoming active, it's flowing with whatever's happening. And you start to hit this ball back and forth and you're hitting it back and forth and you're getting into this sort of spontaneous rhythm and you you lose yourself in this rhythm you just lose yourself in this flow and you're just hitting it back and forth and we've all we've all had this experience from time to time we've all had this experience from time to time where you're maybe not in tennis but in whatever you're doing and you're flowing and you just lose yourself in this rhythm the other thing as well a good a good um example would be dancing would be losing yourself in the rhythm of dancing and flowing in 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 the moves and in let's say you've got lights on you and all the rest of it and and you're just flowing and you're just getting into this this real vibe you're you're almost your very existence your very being is flowing into the music that's wu wei uh this very very effortless action this very very losing yourself to just the experience um and of course it can be mainly a fleeting experience it's not something that you experience all the time or anything like that now of course wu wei you can't attain wu wei by trying to attain it because what i've just mentioned there is something that just happens we just get into these experiences of flow of dancing or whatever it may be we get into them it's not it's something that happens to us rather than something that we really can try and bring about ourselves in our ego i mean there's certain things that we can try to do to get close to it but we ultimately the happening kind of it happens on its own it flips on its own into itself um into that experience but of course you can do certain things to get close to that experience um so of course the first thing any sort of Taoist does is they don't worry too much about books or anything like that they look at experience and that's the Taoists are always natural experiences they experience nature, they experience what it means to experience the world and life. Uh, and they're not so much people who read loads of books or anything like that. But of course, you can very, very easily be a, a Taoist and be very, very well, well learned in, in book learning. You see, Alan Watts would say that uh, the Taoist tries to unlearn things. And while that is very true... Um, it's not the case that a Taoist could not 
partake in book learning while also unlearning certain things as well. I know it's a paradoxical statement, um, but you can actually learn knowledge within books, yet unlearn and start to flow with experience still. But it's obviously about letting go to the experience and absorbing yourself in experience that is totally separate from the book learning anyway. But generally, the the Taoists are not people who read loads of uh, books or anything like that. They're people who are natural, experienced nature. And there are parallels to be drawn, though uh, not fully, but there are certain... uh, similarities and definite connections between Taoism and Stoicism um, because Stoicism regards nature quite highly and things like that Um, but Taoism uh, the difference between Stoicism and Taoism is Stoicism can be quite egoic in its unegoic intentions so what I mean by that is the Stoic is someone who well is Stoic is someone who uh, keeps going for experience but there's always a sense with the Stoics of kind of this uh, grinning and bearing it in a sense. I mean, there's kind of this uh, hardy attitude and it might just be, in fact, it probably is more so a, a modern taint on Stoism uh, to think like that and to have that thought process. Um, but there's kind of that little preconception there or pre-notion with stoicism whereas the Taoists are very much removed from any sort of idea of that and they're very very um very very natural you could compare the the Taoists a little bit more to the cynics in a sense they're kind of like uh you can compare them somewhat to the stoics and you can compare them somewhat to the cynics they're by no means entirely like diagenes or anything like that they're not going out pissing or masturbating in public right um but you there's little comparisons there between those philosophies um so obviously it's about experience so then how do we have this experience how do we flow with these things um well, what will happen if you let's say you read some of these books first off some of these Taoist books that are very short then you're obviously going to start thinking about these things and then you're going to start coming across problems and ideas and thoughts about, well, how do I do this? How do I flow with with the Tao? How can I do this? And then you have to go through all these barriers of awareness and trying to think, well, how do I attain Wu Wei? And then you spend about, well, if you're unlucky, you'll spend maybe five years of your life trying to attain Wu Wei um, when it can't be attained and you're there trying to uh, do that for God knows how many how many years and uh, it's uh, it's just one of those experiences that, that can take quite a while and all that time your awareness is increasing things are happening and experiences are happening maybe mystical experiences or maybe um, uh, psychological awareness experiences for example your ego awareness might increase Um, and it's a very interesting time and then you can meditate and you can think about all these different things uh, with regards to the Tao and with regards to what it means to flow with the Tao or what it uh, what experiences you are having and where this philosophy fits within those experiences and all this all of this stuff that happens in a sense it is simply folly it's it's sim- all this stuff all this meditation all this trying to flow with the Tao, all this trying to attain Wu Wei, all this trying to attain all these different things, trying to attain uh, purposelessness as well, uh, which is more of a Zen concept, but, well, it's a Taoist slash Zen concept, concept but uh, trying to attain all these different things um, is folly. And, and then you'll get to a point where, because you've had so much folly, and over a long period of time of trying to do all these things, trying to get into flowing with the Tao, trying to get into Wu Wei, and with your awareness increasing and then decreasing and then things really being quite disorientated in you in terms of your mentality. I always say disorientated. I think it's disoriented, isn't it? But I can I never I can never say that. Um 
but yeah, with all these things happening inside of you and all this, you know, chaos and stuff ensuing within you and, and outside of you as well, in a sense, um, you'll, you'll end up breaking through these awareness barriers and then get to a certain place where the awareness is, um, a little bit better, a little bit more refined. And then what you realize is that the awareness keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So, um, it's just one of those things that you have to, um, do yourself. It's not, it really isn't, no, no one can say anything. No, you see, it's pointless me doing how, how long has this been video been? A 25 minute video on Taoism when really you need to just go out there and have the experience. Read the books, go out there and then have the experiences, persist in your folly and uh, then you'll realize oh god jesus this is mental what what why the hell did i bother getting into this and you'll try and get out of it and you won't be able to get out of it because you'll be so philosophically in tune with oh i need to know what these things are to to ever go out of it and you'll try and drop it at the door and there'll, there'll be many 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 times or maybe a few times at least where you drop it at the door and you say i don't need to know what wu wei is i i don't need to trying to tame that, it's a load of crap, I can't do it, uh, I've been trying for months and months and months, it's never going to happen, drop it at the door, throw it in the bin, walk out the door, next day, two days later, whatever, oh crap, right, bleh, bleh, I can do this and try it, you know, so it's all like that and it's all crap and it's all horrible, um, but but that's the nature of it and um, and so if, you know, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, you, you simply need to just do that. And, and there's really no point in me talking about anything here. So I'll leave it there. That was a nice little video on Taoism. I have got to go now. I've got it 7.45. I think we are actually getting changed at 8. So I need to go get changed, uh, have some drinks and, uh, it'll be nice. It'll be a nice night. So with that being said, I'll leave it there, guys. And, uh, yeah, I will see you in a little bit. So, um, I'll probably be doing another poetry, philosophy, or reselling video very soon. I do need to record a reselling video. Uh, I've been recording a few philosophy videos as of late and some poetry videos. So I will do a, a reselling video very soon for you. Um, and yeah, it'll be good to start lectures as well next week on Monday. Monday lectures start. So, um, that'll be quite interesting. And as I said on the stream the other day, we will see if I manage to keep up with the YouTube uploads. I, I don't know whether I will. I, I can't promise anything. Uh, but if I can, then I will. And uh, we'll see. And I'll try for one video a week. Um, that's maybe excluding Thursday talks. So I'll try for Thursday talks and maybe one other video a week. Um, but if I can just do Thursday talks each, each week, that's a win, really. Um, but I would like to do one other video. So And, and it's perfectly within my uh, wheelhouse and within my time scale as well. So I'll leave it there guys, thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one, so see you very soon guys.